In this video, we're going to review how to use the PLC 400 to sketch your own drawings on the tablet, take that drawing to the field, and lay it out. This concept will show you how to take something as simple as a napkin sketch that you make of a plan, put it into a basic digital design, and then using a digital layout tool, lay it out accurately in the field. For this tutorial, I'm going to go from basic to intermediate to advanced in the different ways that you can use Sketch on the tablet. So let's start by showing an example. Most of you have seen a PDF before that includes dimensions and locations of objects on your drawing. This shows the lower level foundation plan of a residential job. You can see you have nice square angles, as you're used to, as well as some angles that are skewed to a certain extent, in this case 83 degrees such as you see here. Let me show you in the basic level of how you would lay out the square angles and draw this on the PLC 400. And then I will show you the intermediate level of how to put in angled aspects of drawings. On the PLC 400, I'm gonna begin by creating a project. I'm gonna then go ahead and say add, and I'll call this a sketch project, just to keep it clear. Now that I have the project, I'm able to press the green check mark and accept that I'm on this blank, no drawing, no point job, and I can now get started. When you get back to the main home screen, go ahead and press draw, and now you're ready to begin. I'm gonna to go to the application window at the top in the middle for your draw functions. I'm gonna swipe down and go to the sketch feature. Looking at my PDF for the small residential job, I have a foundation wall that goes on the left side of my drawing that's 42 feet one inch long and you can see that it goes from here all the way down to the bottom over here now the way that you are operating on your job site might differ differ from mine but most of the time what you're going to experience is that you're going to have some sort of property line that's adjacent to or parallel to some sort of line that you're basing everything off of on your plan so let me do this as an example in my example I'm gonna pretend that this foundation line on the left side that's 42 feet and one inch long has a control line associated with that to the left of it. Let's say that it's offset this line by about 20 feet. I'm not sure what your controls are in the field, but it's gonna be something similar. You're gonna have some sort of corner on the building and a point that's offset that corner, probably given to you by a surveyor or general contractor to indicate the starting point of your job. So to begin, I have 42 feet, one inch length of a line that I need to draw in there to establish this line on the residential property. And then I also need to draw in a 20 foot offset from that to the left to indicate the property line. That's the survey line that I'm gonna establish control with my total station when I get to the site. To do that, I start in sketch. I go to the menu and I go to my start point and I'll give it a name. I'll call this bottom left corner. You can call it whatever you want. And I'll give it the northern of zero, the easting of zero, and my height value is zero. If you're working with heights and heights are important, make sure you put the height value you need, but I'll keep this simple. So that's my start point, and I'm gonna say check. And what you're gonna see, it gives you a little red dot here to indicate where your zero, zero, or where this location is gonna be, whatever you indicated. Now, as you remember on my PDF, I need to go a distance of north, and I can see that it's facing north, 42 feet and one inch. I'm gonna say enter, and now if I zoom out, you'll see that that line is there. Simply gonna press check, and you'll see I now have BL corner here, and it naturally put BL corner one at the top. These names I can edit later. But now I know that I have that initial foundation wall on the left side. This line represents this line on my PDF file. Now that I have that line established, before I go further, I always like, by best practice, to put the control line or control points in for my job, especially if I know where they go. As I said in my example, my control is a 20 foot offset to the left of this foundation wall. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw that in. If I wanted to, I could use sketch, but a simple way of doing this is by simply going to the application window and choosing line offset, such as this, tapping the line you wanna offset and clicking on it until it's going the right direction. So for me, it's to the left. And now I'm gonna go ahead and indicate that that offset should be 20 feet. And now you can see that this line, which is my foundation line, is still present. And once I press check, this line here, which is my 
property line will be present as well. So now I can press check and now I have that property line and if I want to I can put control points on there by going to point creation indicating that I'm going to be putting control points on that line at the end point. So I'm going to simply click that line. It's going to put a point at one end and then the other and now I have my two control points listed in my job file as triangles. Now there's multiple ways to do that which I'll show you as well. You can go to this point creation menu, go to the point offset instead and let's say that you need, you have specific offsets from the specific points of your plan. You can also click that point and indicate at what offset that control point will be. So for instance, in this situation, let's say that I wanted to go to the left and up of this point. So let's say it's to the left by 10 feet and up by 10 feet. I can say up 10 feet and to the left 10 feet by saying negative 10 in this case. And what it'll do is it will save a point at that ind indication. There's multiple YouTube videos on how to do this point offset, so I'm not gonna go into it further than that. Just know that there's multiple ways to get your control points on here based off of the sketch you're gonna do. But let's go ahead and get back to the sketch. I'm gonna go back to my application window, get back to sketch, and let's keep going with my drawing. I have my first initial foundation wall. I'm able to put in my control points that I know I'm gonna use. And now let me go back to my PDF and I'm gonna keep sketching based off my dimensions. Again, we're doing the basic version of sketch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch this basic outline of this plan to keep it simple. As you can see, I have a baseline down here that is 37 foot 3 inches long. I'm going to go ahead and put that one in now as well. I'm going to go to sketch. I'm going to indicate that my start point is from this BL corner. I'm going to go to sketch over here. I'm going to turn it to the right. These are in 45 degree increments, so I know I'm going directly to the right. And I'm going to type in 37 foot 3 inches. So now I have my south base wall in my plan. And I'll go ahead and save that line. Now for my top, I have a line going this way, that's 17 foot 7, and then another line going this way, that's 7 foot 4 with the addition of these two dimensions. And then I also have to make sure I go down 1 foot 6. So I'll go ahead and sketch that in as well using the same principles that I've been using. Okay, so what I've completed so far is the left side exterior edge of this building, except for the right. The left side, the top, and the bottom. I haven't gotten to the right side yet because we have to work with this garage here. So, so far, as far as the basic plan goes, you can see how easy this is if you're working with right angles and basic 45 degree angles. I have my bottom foundation, left foundation, and top all completed. And what you see up here at the top is I just simply followed my dimensions. I went over, I went down, and then I went over again, and I have my drawing so far. This left side, top, left, and bottom side of this drawing. So if you're doing basic wall layout and you're working with these basic angles of 90 degrees, 45 degrees, and this is all you need, you've just completed a basic sketch. And of course, you can complete this square by drawing multiple lines and finishing this off. However, I'm gonna show the intermediate version of this now by sketching in that garage at an angle. And this is where it gets a little complicated, but it's not as complicated as you might think. As you can see, this garage has a seven degree angle from this previous line I just made. So what I need to do is I need to sketch in this wall here going north at a seven degree angle from this wall right here. Now the distance that I'm gonna be moving from this wall going north is 16 foot eight inches as you can see right here. So I need to make sure I go to the right seven degrees and go up 16 foot eight. Let me show you how that's done. Here's the point that I need to move seven degrees from. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and move back to where it's facing directly north, and I'm gonna simply at this angle tell it to turn seven degrees. Now that it's turned seven degrees, I'm now oriented in the correct distance. Now I need to simply type in the correct distance that I need to go as well, which if you recall is 16 foot eight. I'm gonna say check, and I now have that top part of that garage right up there. Now let me go ahead and get the bottom half of this wall that's nine feet five away from that origin point that I was measuring from before. I'm simply going to go to my start point, indicate that I'm gonna start from here again, and then sketch, I'm gonna go ahead and show you that because I'm still at the seven degree angle, notice that if I turn to the right and right and right, 
I'm now going at 45 degree increments, but in orientation to that initial line. Okay, and I'm going to show you how you can work with this later, but notice that because I already turned this line 7 degrees, the tool keeps it at that 7 degrees mark, and now these arrows, while they're still turning 45 degrees, the 45 degrees are in orientation to that 7 degree angle. So now I'm turning 45 degrees plus 7 each time. So now I know I'm directly 180 to that first 7 degree angle, and now I know I'm going the right distance. I'm going to go ahead and type in 9 foot 5, and now I'm going to say check. And now I have that second part of the garage completed. Let me do that again, but now I'm going to do it a different way. Let's say that I start from my starting point. I go to sketch, and let's say that my angle as default starts at 0. How would I get this line back to this to be oriented to this one line. The software has a very easy to use method. It's called set orientation. So whenever you are on a point and you have a line going to set in a certain direction and you don't know what angle to actually click on here, I can simply say, okay, I know that the orientation of this line is supposed to be in conjunction with this line here. I can go to set orientation and now ask me to select two points or a line. Typically it's a line. So notice here's a line I can select, click on that line, and immediately the line that I'm sketching on goes in conjunction with the degree turn of an angle with that line. The same thing applies if I go to my starting point being over here, for instance, BL corner 3. Again, if my degree started at 0 and I wanted to have this line be at the same angle as this line, I go to set orientation, and immediately when I click on the line that's angled, you'll see that even over here it gets angled to that orientation as well. So if you ever confused, just simply say set orientation, click on the line that you know is oriented properly, and you're good to go, or simply type in the angle yourself. The other option, which is saying select two points instead, just to give you an idea for this, if you have two points such as BO corner two, going towards BO corner one, let me tap on BO corner one real quick, you'll notice that it'll actually make the line in the conjunction with that line as well, BL corner down here, 2 to 1. And it'll orient itself to that if, there, if you want to use two points as well, just to show you what that does. So now let me go ahead and complete that garage, and you'll see that I've completed the basic sketch of this exterior. I now need to sketch 16 foot 1 going this way, 26 foot 1 going this way. So start point, BL corner 6. I'm going to make sure that my orientation is still set on this line. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate it twice to be 90 degrees to that point. I'm going to type in 16 foot 1. I'm going to say check. Now because I'm still oriented to this angle, I'm going to go to the right two times to make it 90 degrees from that point. And I'm going to say 26 foot 1. I'm going to say check. And now I'm basically done and I can just draw a line between these two by going to my middle application window, going to the line function, and now I can complete this garage by tapping those two points and saving that line. And now I've completed this exterior. Now I need to just simply bring this point up to the wall, and I'm completed. For the PDF that I'm working with, this is a little bit complicated because as you can see, I have dimensions going from this bottom right-hand corner up to this point, but I don't have it going up beyond that into this area here. So what I'm gonna do just to keep this simple is I'll just go ahead and draw a line that goes into the garage a little bit and I'll just disregard whatever ex excess that I have. And now you can see if I go to top down view that even though that line goes a little bit into the garage I'm okay with that because at least I extended up to that where that garage is. So now we have the basic foundation plan of this job with this angled garage here in the middle that I can lay out. Again my total station is probably going to be stationed right here, stationed on these two building corners that are offset from my initial foundation and I'm ready to go. Now, if you stuck with me so far, let's go to the next version, which is going to be advanced, where I'm going to be working with radii and circles a little bit more. For the advanced portion of this, I want to show you a very complicated looking PDF file of a reflective ceiling plan of a pool area, I believe this is. And what's interesting about this is there's not really any straight lines. How could you sketch something like this onto your tablet if you need to lay this out? Rather than, of course, doing the whole thing, which could take you a little bit of time. I'm going to just show you one area of this and I'll sketch that out and you'll get the idea. Keep in mind that this drawing is in millimeters so on my tablet I've switched my units to millimeters. Either way, with, regardless of the dimensions you're using, the button pushes remain the same. 
For my example, I'm going to go ahead and begin at this point way down here, this little bottom point. On my tablet, you'll notice I've drawn this line here and this line here to start this as my origin point. And as you can guess, I'm going to be typing in all these dimensions, which you can see here. Zero right there stands for my starting point. And if I orient this drawing to the way that it's drawn on the PDF, you can see that that's what we're looking at. That zero point right there is where I'm starting. So let's, how, let's talk about how to begin. With this drawing, you can see that these arcs are perfect arcs at certain intervals. And it's labeled here how they're offset and how to, how to draw, them, draw them in. So I'll go ahead and draw in this arc here and this line right here, just to show you as an example. I'm going to go ahead and put in this point here and this point here. This is 1,222. Two off of this line. Let's draw that in. Starting point zero, 1222. And we're going to make sure that we're going south. Bingo. I have my south line now completed. Now the next point is 1663 to the right, 1054 down south of that point. So I'm going to do that twice. I'm going to go 1663 to the right, 1054 south. I'm going to type in 663, say check. And now I'm going to go again, 1054. So now point 3 and point 5 represent parts of that arc. You can see here, this is point 3, this is point 5, and this is my arc. Now the arc circumference distance is 2046. The radius is 2141. So there's a function on the tablet where I can go to my draw menu, select two points in a radius. My two points are 5 and 3 and my radius is 2,141. And now it's going the wrong direction. You can see here that it's asking me if I'm doing the small part of the circle or the big part of the circle and which direction it's going. And in my case, I, by process of elimination, I know I'm going right small, meaning the right side of the circle, but it's also the smaller part of the circle. So now that that's completed, I can press check. So point 0.3 to point 0.5 is my arc, and now the remaining material behind it I can just delete. I'll go to my delete function, and I can just click and delete. I'll keep this clean. So as you can see, this arc represents this arc right here. 2046 is supposed to be the circumference. I can go to Kogo right here and check to make sure that that indeed is 2046, which it is. Okay. Now the next segment is this right here. I can go ahead and draw that in. 606 to the right of that last point, 1057 to the north of that point. So I'll type that in real quick. So now I have those two points and they simply need to be connected with a line. Six to five, connected. And I can now delete the material that I don't need. And now this represents this so far. Okay, so I'm not obviously not going to do the entire plan, but you can see that that's how you go about doing it for the advanced mode. Now, once you get it all completed, what would you do next? Well, then you'd have to make sure that you put on your control points. Let me go to top down view here so you can see. So after you get this completed, you simply put your control points on here like you did at the beginning, wherever they might be. They're going to be some sort of offset. Station your tool, and then you can lay out. That's as simple as it gets. So I hope that this helped, and I hope that you can now more confidently sketch your own drawings if needed. And don't feel so reliant on having a DWG from a drafter if you just don't necessarily need one. Please leave any questions or comments down below so I can hear your experiences.